Okay. Um, I think I need to go back just a little bit here. I think I started. Oh yeah, here we go. 5.3, the zero product property. This is part three. It's, it's, it's the section that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know that I need you to write this down. I just want to point out if a, b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Okay, or both, A and B could be zero. So basically, we need to find, like here, this is A times B equals zero. So either this, see how they wrote this out, either X plus 5 equals zero, or X minus 7 equals zero. Example number one, X squared equals 4X by factor. We need to solve this. Um, here we go. We can't uh, factor unless we have it set equal to zero. So x squared, I'm going to subtract the 4x. Please do subtract 4x rather than subtract x squared. It's hard to factor. It's not hard. I mean, it's doable, but I don't want you to have to factor with the lead of a negative. All right? Um, let's see. Common binomial factor. I believe there's an x in both terms. So I pull out an x. x times what gives you x squared? x x times 4 gives you negative 4x, it's still equal to 0, right? So that means either this part has to equal 0 or this equals 0. Let me write that out. Either x equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. Well, this I already have as one of my solutions. And over here, we have x equals 4 because I would add 4 to both sides. I get there. What this basically means is your parabola, if you were to graph this in, um, in your graphic calculator, you would have an x-intercept of 0, you would have the other x-intercept at 4. Okay, we don't need a graphic calculator, you can do it by hand, but I'm not going to show you that on the video. Okay, example 2, we're going to solve this one by factoring. <coughs> Alright, once again, it's set equal to 0, lovingly enough. Is there a common factor between 49x squared and 16? No, there's not. So you're going to go ahead and put down two sets of parentheses. I don't want to forget my equal to zero. What times what gives you 49x squared? 7x, 7x. What times what gives you 16? 4 and 4. Okay, I need a negative 16, so one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Okay, because this has got to be set equal to zero, either this part equals zero or this part equals zero. So I say 7x plus 4 could be 0, or 7x minus 4 could be 0. Um, or I should say and as well. So 7x is equal to negative 4 if I subtract negative 4. x is equal to negative 4 sevenths after I divide. So if I put 7x here, it's going to be equal to positive 4. Divide by 7, I get positive 4 sevenths. In other words, I should show you in a different one. Maybe not this one with the fractions. I should go back and show my check my work to make sure it works out okay. All right, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Is there a common factor? No. Put down two sets of parentheses then. All right, what times what gives you x squared? x and x. What times types of things multiply give you 6? Uh, 1 and 6. 3 and 2. <laughs> they both give you um, the 5. What's my rule? Go with the numbers close together. So I've got 3 and 2. We got plus and plus because everything up here is positive. Oh, I forgot to say it's equal to 0. With that being said, x plus 3 equals 0, or, or I should say and as well, this equals 0. If that's the case, x equals negative 3. If this is the case, x equals negative 2. Now here's the kicker. I just This is one that's good to show you how this works. If I put negative 3 back in here, I would have negative 3 quantity squared plus 5 times negative 3 plus 6. 9 minus 15 plus 6. 9 6 is 15 minus 15 is 0. <gasps> I get 0. So we know this is a correct answer. Notice how I put negative 3 back in for both x's. Now I get to put negative 2 in back for both x's. I have students who think you put negative 3 in for one x and you put negative 2 in for the other x. Not the case. Here I go. Negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 6. Negative 2 squared is 4. This is negative 10. And this is 6. 
4 minus 10 is negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So this also gives me the 0, which is supposed to happen. And these solutions here, right here, these are your roots, your zeros, your x-intercepts, whatever you want to call it, of that parabola. Okay? In other words, we did that whole graphing thing with another lesson. You had to do all those points until you found where it intersected. Here's the deal. Factory. Woo! A little bit nicer. Not so, uh, not so labor intensive. All right. Here's the next one. Example four. Solve by factoring. So I have x squared minus 6x. I want to set it equal to zero first. So I'm going to have plus 9 equals zero. Is there a common binomial factor? There is not. So what do you do? Two sets of parentheses. All right, what times what gives you x squared? x and x. What times what gives you 9? 1 and 9, 9 and 1, or 3 and 3? I think I'll start with 3 and 3 first. This is a positive number, but this is a negative, which is an indicator that I have both negatives. Oh, well, this is interesting. Huh, x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. In this case, uh-oh. Uh-oh. This always makes me a little nervous. Things go a little hairy. -wise. I don't want it to drop, die on me now. Don't die on me now, Promethean board. Don't do it. Um, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait it out just a minute here. So hold on, folks. You may get to forward wine just a little bit. Oh, here it comes. All right, x equals 3. I'm not even going to, I mean, x minus 3 equals 0. What can you put in? You're going to put in 3. You can write it again for this one, but do you really need to? No. The answer is 3. This is a parabola, by the way, smiling, y-intercept of 9. It's moved a little bit. It's opposite of what you think. This one's moved to the right a little bit. And your x-intercept is 3, meaning that, like, 1, 2, 3, it must do one of these things. See how much parabola you can get figured out? This is a 9. This is a 3. It's smiling. We know it's moved to the right. There's your axis of symmetry just from that little bit. Okay? You don't even have to graph the whole thing to get a good idea. Uh, this is example number 5, evidently. Okay, here we go. One more time. Set it equal to 0 first. So I get my 6x squared plus 11x plus 4 equals 0. I got a factor. Here's the kicker. There is no common factor, so I put down two sets of parentheses. This gets ugly. 1 times 6 or 3 times 2. Even the lead number I'm going to have to work with here. I'm going to start, once again, my rule of thumb is start with 3x and 2x. Those numbers are pretty close together. Here's the other issue. We got 4. Well, I can take 2 times 2 and get 4, or I can take 4 times 1, or for that matter, 1 times 4. All right? So I'm going to follow my own rules and put 2 and 2 first. All right? Everything's positive here. I'll make everything positive down here. I don't know if that's the right factoring. I have to FOIL plus 6x plus 4x plus 4 gives me 0. Is this, see how the 6x checks here, the 4 checks, but the OI of FOIL, the OI part, gives me 10x, and I, I need an 11x. So this one's not going to work. Now, here's my method. Do not change these terms around. Leave them the same throughout the problem. Always change your second terms. Okay, so now I'm going to work with 4 and 1. Okay, so now I FOIL. 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Ooh, how about this? That's 11x. This part checks with this. I know my 6x squared checks. My 4 checks. I wasn't quite expecting us to get that on the second try. How nice is that? All right, so this is the correct factory. Feeling confident about that. Now, I still have to solve. So I set this part equal to 0. Set this equal to 0. 3x plus 4 equals 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. 3x equals negative 4, so that makes x equal to negative 4 thirds. 2x equals negative 1, so x equals negative 1 half. Those are my x-intercepts. They're the solutions. They're the zeros. They're the roots. 
um, to my parabola. If I were to graph them out, that, were, that is where my, um, my x-intercepts would be. All right, that's the end of that. <laughs>